Hey guys, how's it going today? Brain here, Brain's Fish Tank Channel. I want to give you a long overdue update on the 29 gallon reef tank. So much has happened, and, uh, you know, I've, I've had a lot of changes to this tank, so I figured I'd just fill you guys in on what's going on with this tank. Um, it's looking so much better. What actually happened was I got a whole new tank, um, whole new lighting system, a lot of new corals, new stands. Uh, new fish, so I've gotten a lot of stuff, so I'll try to fill you guys in on everything. So first off, this is actually a coral life bio cube. I had the old oceanic bio cube, but it had some scratches on it, and the lighting was not optimum. It actually had a lot of scratches on it. I still have the tank, but it's not um, set up right now. So yeah, uh, I replaced it with this one, which I got a great deal on it. I got the tank, an in-tank media basket. Um, to hold like different media for your filter um, and this nice stand meant for the bio cube as well as a rapid LED retrofit kit which if you guys aren't familiar with that is basically just a kit that you build into the um, hood the existing hood um, it's an LED kit which allows you to grow a lot more um, variety of coral and I also got an LED controller which is hidden down in here um, Having an electrical savvy uh, parent helps out with that, though. So my dad helped me out um, with the LEDs. He did most of the work, to be honest. I didn't do that much, but um, so he really helped me out with those. Uh, we got it for 150, and we wound up re. We got the tank, the stand, the lighting, the controller, and the intake media basket. And the the lighting itself costs about 200 bucks, and then. The controller costs like 65 and then you think you get a brand new tank. Well, it wasn't brand new, it was set up, but it has like no scratches. So once you clean off the algae and everything, it's like brand new in a stand. And the media basket's like 50 bucks or whatever. So, you know, I got a really good deal on this tank. Um, it was probably one of the best deals, the best fish tank deal I've ever gotten. Um, it was, uh, I actually got it off of a um, reefers forum slash club in my area that I'm a member of. So, yeah, I found it online on their forum, and I just went for it. So, um, yeah, we're rocking with this new reef. This guy's been set up, I think, I got it, like, either early, I think I got it late December, early January, like, one of the first days of January, early December, I can't really remember. So it's been running for, like, four, almost five months. It's going to be almost five months because it's almost May. So it's doing pretty well, um, getting established and whatnot. I have a wide variety of corals and different life in this reef tank. So um, as far as fish goes, I have one marine clownfish. If you remember from my last video of the BioCube, I had two. Um, one of them actually passed away, and I never found its body. So either my large cleanup crew took care of it, or this anemone might have eaten the clownfish. That's what someone... I thought that it could have, but someone also said, like, I bet money that that enemy did it. I don't know if he did. I don't think I'm ever going to find out, but, you know, it's possible. I'm not really sure. I wasn't on a very good feeding routine with the fish, and I'm doing I'm doing better with feeding the fish now, I'm trying to get on a good routine every day after school or every other day. Usually I'll do it, like, every other day. So say, to, say tomorrow is Monday, uh, and I feed the fish today, I wouldn't do it on Monday, but I'd do it on Tuesday. Then I'd skip Wednesday, do it on Thursday, etc. So, yeah, I have the one maroon clownfish. This is a female. She's a cool-looking fish, and part of me wants to kind of, like, experiment and get rid of this fish and get more peaceful fish, but to be honest, I really like this fish. It's really colorful and interesting to watch it host the anemone, and I really like the color and... Um, personality of the fish, so while it is aggressive and it definitely limits my um, selection on what other fish I can keep in this tank, I decided to just keep it for now and, um, you know, just roll with it. Then I also have a six-line wrasse, who I got this guy uh, fairly soon after I set this tank up, so he's been in here for like probably at least three months. He does really good. He's a colorful fish. Um, he doesn't have too much of a special personality. He kind of just, like, swims around. But he's kind of cool because, like, sometimes he'll be zooming around and other times he just kind of takes his time. So, you know, he just adds some cool color and activity to the tank. I also have a yellow watchman goby. Um, he's not out, though. He's a goby, and he's pretty shy, so he just kind of chills um, on the sand bed. And I, he makes his home, like, underneath these rocks 
within these caves right here, so it's he doesn't come out that much unless I feed him. And I did introduce a pistol shrimp, which they have a symbiotic relationship with in nature, so I think the maroon might have got to him, or he just hides. I've never ever seen him. Well, I saw him the second day that I had him, and then I never saw him again, so maybe he was too small. I don't really know. My skunk cleaner shrimp also, I haven't seen him for like weeks, maybe even a month, so I'm guessing he passed away. I don't know where he went or what took care of him, so, I mean, I can hope for the best, but I'll probably wind up getting another one of those. Same with my peppermint shrimp. I think they kind of disappeared. I'm not sure what it was, if it was something with my water chemistry um, or if it was, you know, like one of my uh, emerald crabs or anything like that or the maroons, so, um, yeah, I mean, I completely rescaped this tank, and I really like it now. It um, it's in a good setup right now, and I really like the layout. So I have kind of this. This is my phone camera because my bloggy, the Sony bloggy that I use to typically do my videos, um, does not capture the vid the correct like lighting spectrum due to the LEDs. Um, because see, I'll move this up quickly, but they're very bright. Uh, as you can tell, they're very bright. So. Um, it's kind of, I don't know why, but it doesn't really capture the correct lighting, so I decided to use my phone. So I'm just going to give a quick rundown on, like, different stuff I have in the tank. Back here is my leather coral. I think it's a devil's hand leather. It's not open. Well, it's open right now, but it's, like, the, it has little flower petals. Here's a little small one of it. So it has little petals like that that, uh, kind of stick out. Right now it's not the flower petals aren't open, I don't know why, you know, sometimes different times of the day the corals will open, or like this guy. Right now, it just looks like kind of nasty, but this actually opens up and it looks like my green star polyps, except it's just this tan color, kind of like Xenia, but it opens up like little small grass strands. So that is green star polyps, that's my devil's hand leather. This is a frog spawn coral. I had this back in the first video of my bio cube, so this has been doing good. Uh, this is my torch coral. I got it at an auction, and that's been doing fairly well. Uh, hasn't really grown that much, but it's looking good. I have, like, two small heads of torch. Then I have a green mushroom, a black with red dot mushroom, and some zoas. These zoas aren't doing very well for some reason. I don't know why, because I have SPS growing. Um, they, they were one of my original zoas that I had, so I don't know why they're not doing too great, but this is a zoa frag that I did the other day. A frag of these zoas. Um, so the frag put kind of fell over, but I'm probably going to sell those or eventually do something with them. And these are some, um, I don't really know what you call them. I just call them like little blue snowflake polyps or whatever. I'm not really sure on the scientific name or anything, but they're a really easy soft coral to grow. They spread really fast. Um, I have another mushroom over here. This, I'm not sure, it might be some type of fabia, or, um, it has sweeper tentacles. I think it's some type of LPS coral. It was, it was sold as Pavona. I don't know if it's Pavona, but I think that's an SPS, so I'm not really sure. It's kind of, the guy didn't seem to be that positive on what it was either. Um, then this is, I don't think, this might be a type of water with steel. I mean, geez, now I'm thinking fresh water. This might be a type of, uh, Xenia, but I don't know, I, or like waving hand coral or Xenia coral, um, I have some more of it over here, so I think it's just a variety of Xenia like this, really fast growing, this thing's just taking over this portion, so I might trim this back and do something else with it, like some cellos or something a little more classy, I guess, because this is, it looks kind of cool, but it's just kind of, I don't know, it's just a simple easy to care for coral. Um, Right there is an anemone. I have two anemones right there. That's a Haitian or pink tipped colony anemone. Um, it's mainly whitish, little tan color with some purplish pink tips. Um, and right here I have the uh, green bubble tip anemone with pink tips. This is a new addition that I got fairly recently, a couple weeks ago. Um, and it's been doing very well in my tank. It has the bubble tips, and it's a fairly small anemone, but I got it for free, so I can't complain about that, because I really like that. Um, and eventually I'll probably replace this anemone with this one, maybe, or get a rose bubble tip anemone, or just get rid of this one altogether and put some SPS there. I like it because it gives, like, a nice focal point in the reef. However, it 
it might just become too much of a pain because they can be a little bit aggressive, like eating fish. Like it could have eaten my marine clownfish and sting other corals. So, you know, I might just go with the bubble tip because it's a little more friendly for the reef tank. Um, as far as other stuff, I have an acan coral right here. I definitely want to get more acans. I really like the way they look. But um, right now, I just I haven't been to the fish store lately. And at the auction that I went to, all the acans were kind of going for expensive prices. So um, just more than I wanted to buy um, and pay for. So this is a hairy mushroom. I've had this guy for a long time. It does pretty good. It hasn't propagated yet for some reason. But like I really like it. It's cool. Pretty easy soft coral doesn't grow that fast, but it just kind of chills and it looks cool, so, you know, I like it. Uh, this is a green Montipora cap coral. I have another small piece of it right there. That's Pasuliopora SPS right there. It's kind of hard to tell, but I broke that piece off. This is an SPS, so it's supposed to be up higher. As you can see, it's starting to bleach a little bit greener. Um, lose some of its color. I, it fell off the back, so I might put it back. I don't really know. I was out of glue. I just got some yesterday, so I haven't got a chance to re-glue that coral on. Here's one of my sand sifting stars. Uh, some mushrooms, these zoanthids, some green pallies. Right here, I have some cool gonzoas. I got this rock for like six dollars. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see them. Again, this is my cell phone. Um, and I did a little frag of those on this rock. So, yeah, um, trumpet coral right there. I have a red Montipora cap, and I have this pink bird's nest, which this stuff does excellent. I love this stuff. It's a very fast-growing SPS. For me, it's done great, and I'll probably frag this fairly soon. It's getting pretty tall, so eventually I'd like it to just kind of take over this corner and block out this power head, well, circulation pump. Um, I had some... Uh, a hammer coral that was branching off over here, but my stupid sea urchin up here, tuxedo sea urchin, knocked it down. So he's, let me see if I can, yeah, the hammer coral's down there. Um, so I need to pick that up again. I haven't been in the tank for a couple days, though. Uh, then I got this sunset montipora. I think that's what it's called. Then I have regular bird's nest, green slime racopora. I don't know if that's a red digitata, I'm not really sure, um, and some Pasiliopora. So, that's kind of my SPS section, this this rock up here and over here. Um, so, eventually what I want to do fairly soon is get some type of blue or purple Acropora or some type of blue or purple SPS that's not too difficult to take care of. But my lighting can basically support everything, but, you know, I think, I think it should be able to at least. Nothing... It should be able to support basically all SPS, I'm hoping, um, from what I've read online. So, and just kind of take over this space in the back. So, I mean, that's kind of the plan with the reef. So, sorry that this was a long video, but I haven't done an update for so long, and I felt like it was necessary to do that, because I really should have done more video documenting on this, but I don't know. Just having the uh, bloggy not being able to take pictures of this, and having a dorm on my phone is a little bit annoying because, you know, the quality definitely suffers. So, uh, thank you guys all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I think my reef's looking really good, but comment down below what you think on it. And, uh, I'll post, I can post my, uh, thread on, from the Nano Reef Forum. I have another thread, but it's a little more personal. It's for the club, and it has my location and whatnot, so I don't want to really, uh, reveal that to all my YouTube watchers, but uh, I'll, I'll link you guys the thread to my Nano Reef um, BioCube tank thread, so you guys can check out the progress on there, in case I don't, if I forget to, you know, do some videos and whatnot. So yeah, thank you all again for watching, please comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll be having some more videos on the reef momentarily. Alright, see you guys.